Hi, my name is Kevin and I collect old irons. Today we're going to talk about the polishing irons, which were irons used to press a sheen into highly starched fabric. In the English realm, uh, these irons would be used by those who were the barristers, the solicitors, the clergymen, the bankers. These folks wore highly starched clothing in the collars, and I have one over here, um, also in the cuffs and in the fronts of shirts to give you a, a stiff appearance to perhaps match your stiff upper lip. The one you see in the image here is, um, you can actually currently buy from the Darcy Company in England. I'm not sure, but I wonder if that Darcy is perhaps um, relates to the um, male romantic lead in Pride and Prejudice. These devices were bought independently. Uh, you would you'd clip them in with, um, with collar sticks or cuff links, or uh, if you had something a little bit cheaper, you would button these in. And these were widely used in the Victorian and into the early 1900s. The polishing irons are a modest group. They're generally small, but they have interesting shapes. Um, they're not a group that I personally seek out, but I find when I'm assembling the collections here for, these, this, for this video that I have more than 20 of these things. And I think the reason is that um, they are attractive and they're inexpensive. All the irons that I will be showing here are irons pretty much that I bought for less than $50. And we will start with the, the oldest American polishing iron that has a patent date. This is the M.A.B. Cook, 1848. M.A.B. means Mary Ann B., um, a woman inventor. She would probably have called herself an inventress. We've already seen uh, Mrs. Potts. Now we have Mary Ann Cook. Uh, we will see some other female inventors later on in, in subsequent videos. The 1900s did not have a lot of female inventors. Um, maybe only 1% of patent holders, but quite a concentration within the irons. I have mentioned previously uh, Mrs. Potts as a um, dissertation topic and that could be extended to the female inventors of irons in general. By the way, the, um, the MAB Cook irons come in various uh, markings on the top and various handles as well. The polished irons in general are uh, rounded, fore and aft, bottom and top. Fore and aft is a, an appropriate term to use for this one. It has a very ship-like shape to it. Um, it has, this is called the keystone iron, it has a keystone design here, sometimes it has the word keystone up here on the handle. Um, made in Pennsylvania, of course. And another common polishing iron is rounded on both sides, has an extra weight on the front and back. The uh, front and back weight is where that's the business end of a polishing iron. This is the Suffolk polisher. They come by other names. And if you see one of these, um, take a good look at it because some of them are detachable handles. The handles actually slip off on a rail. I don't have one of those to show, but they are very interesting. And let's take a look at some more. A lot of the polishing irons have a teardrop shape. Um, this particular one has Geneva, Illinois on the handle, and we'll see some other Geneva irons in other categories later on. There are a number of irons of this shape and size, and one of them is the butt polisher from the Butt Company, which I talked about when we did our, our Taylor iron video. I could not find my uh, my butt polisher. I um, things things come and go as I uh, buy, sell, trade, and whatnot. But 
to remind you, the butt company was a rope designer and there would be a rope design around the top of the iron and while I was thinking about that, I do have now several comments from people who have questions about the trivets. You will see this group of trivets and you'll notice that there's a rope design around the trivet that is also from the butt company. Let's do a few more here. Um, all the irons that we've seen so far are single piece irons. There is more variety than that, of course. Uh, this is the Gleason's polisher. It has a wooden handle and has a shield. There are various other irons of this design. And this is a Mrs. Potts polisher, um, rounded on the bottom. Lots of patent dates on this particular one. So there is, as I, you know, a variety of irons associated with the uh, bottoms associated with the detachable handled irons. I am sure that most of the other major detachable companies also produced polisher bottoms, but those are rare. So if you see one of those, you might snag that. And while I'm finishing up this portion of our polishing irons, let me show you the uh, two most common European designs. Um, this is a product of the Kendrick company, made lots of irons of every description you can think of. And this is a traditional flat iron, simply rounded at the back. And I'll show this one as well. This is a French polishing iron. Both of these, um, as far as I can tell, not imported to the United States, but they do make their way over here by, by tourists and collectors, and you may well see one of those. And there's one particularly noteworthy group of polishing irons, and these are from the McCoy Company of Troy, New York. McCoy liked small irons of diversity of shapes, and there are a lot of McCoy products out there. Um, this is a very common McCoy iron, rounded on the bottom with a slant handle as well. Um, here is a McCoy that has rounded on two faces on the bottom. And here is a third, again, small, rounded, fore and aft, and underneath as well. Um, this one, I should, you might note the tags here. Um, if you are going to collect these things, uh, provenance can be important. Uh, this particular iron was previously owned by Carol Walker very famous iron collector, and then more recently by Mary Blestry. Uh, each of them put stickers on these irons and I've retained those. But the McCoy polishers are most famous for this iron. This iron is of a shape that we'll see later associated with hat irons, that is to say quite massive, rounded at the front. The McCoy polisher has a cross-hatched bottom and that is a way of concentrating the weight over a smaller area and a strap top and this was enormously successful uh, a lot of these irons are on the antique market not only the McCoy which here says McCoy and Troy New York but many other manufacturers picked these up as well very similar shapes but with different markings uh, sometimes a little bit different uh, this is a Gould polisher with a cross-hatched handle and not cross-hatched on the bottom. Actually, this iron reminds me, perhaps, of the reason why I might have as many polishers as I have. Again, it's not a group that I really consciously chase down. But they are inexpensive and they are unusual enough. And dealers in southern Maine know me because I do loops around there quite regularly and when they find one of these things they say hmm that's a little bit unusual and they set it underneath the counter for me and I think several of these irons have that kind of story I come in they say Kevin I've got something for you and they pull this out at a very modest price and of course you can't say no while we're talking about that very typical hat shape uh, this is a polishing iron. It's got the cross-hatched bottom, um, more massively built, um, and I wanted to point out the little indentation at the front. 
I think this is another one of those industrial irons that we talked about at the end of the Taylor iron video. Again, some device would latch onto this and would literally pull these things around a platform to mechanically iron the fabric. And while we're talking about polishers that have some kind of a, of a tailor use perhaps, uh, this is a large, very massive iron and I would expect this perhaps to be a tailor iron. So with that, I think we're going to have a short video this time. Not a whole lot to say about the polishing irons, um, but they are interesting, they are inexpensive, and they add good accent to uh, any iron collection. And he's also speaking to a particular forms of dress that were really important once upon a time, and which we uh, now don't even, don't even consciously think of. I remember when I was a child, um, my parents would give me, I'd have clothes that had more highly starched sleeves and cufflinks and all that kind of stuff. And again, that is now ancient history. So thank you for watching this video and we'll talk about other applied uses for these irons in subsequent videos.